Become a Therapist podcast plus listeners can listen to episodes early and ad free right now. Become a plus listener by going to Apple Podcasts, searching for the Trauma Therapist podcast, and signing up today. Welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. My name is Guy McPherson. My mission is to help trauma therapists be their incredible selves, to be human, to be real, not just a clinician. I'm a big believer in who we are is more important than what we know. And this requires cultivating authenticity, genuineness, and vulnerability, and that requires intention. You can learn more about my courses and workshops by going to thetraumatherapistproject.com. That's thetraumatherapistproject.com. Let's get started. All right, here we go. So five, four, three, two, and one. Our right, folks, welcome back to the podcast. I am thrilled to have back Sarah Schulting-Kranz. Sarah, welcome back. Thank you. I'm excited to be back with you. Awesome. So Sarah has secretly blazed her trail in resiliency for over 31 years. Having experienced overwhelming devastation and pain from a young age, she kept her emotions and traumas hidden. When her will to live was tested, her resilience kept her walking. From sexual assault at 17 years of age to the demise of her marriage at 40, caused by her former husband's double life, Sarah began publicly speaking her truth in 2015 when asked to share her secret in resiliency. At 49 years of age, Sarah has built a successful business in an unprecedented way. You could say she's an artistic visionary who creates through a lens of pushing the needle forward regardless of naysayers or fear. Through her own foolproof and simple techniques, She teaches actionable steps to become more resilient and to use resiliency as a foundation for living authentically. Sarah, welcome back. Thank you. So So, much has changed. So much has changed. Um, Before we get going here, remind our listeners and uh, share with them where you're from originally and where you are currently. Originally, I'm from a very small village in the middle of, well, Midwest uh, in Wisconsin, 1,100 people call it a little bit of a farm girl. And today I live in Hermosa Beach, California. Very different. Awesome. 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 Very different. So, uh, all right, let's, let's dive into this. Um, I know, you know, you drove me on the podcast a while back, but that was a while back, but for those people who didn't uh, or haven't yet heard that, give us the nutshell. How did all this start for you? Yeah, the nutshell will give you the third. I like it to call it like the 30,000 foot view because I also climb a lot of mountains. And so that's how I, you know, pull out the perspective. Uh, You can read the details in the book. I did publish a book Um, The my trauma started at 17 when, as you said, I was sexually assaulted by somebody that I knew. And it was a devastating time in my life because I was not seen. And there were so many people that did not believe me. And even the police had turned their backs and I had to get a restraining order. And it was, it was really hard. I learned at that time in my life at the age of 17, that the most important relationship that you can have is the one with yourself. The person who walked me through so much of that trauma was my mom. She was the one at four o'clock every day would say, grab your shoes, go, let's walk down main street of our town, hold your head high. People don't believe you, but that's okay. Because quite frankly, you need to believe in yourself. That's the most important thing. She she literally has been my rock. Um, unfortunately, she just passed July 6th. Uh, I'm going to start to cry. Mother's Day weekend was very hard for me. Uh, she passed July 6th of 2022. And um, she was there for me during my trauma that happened at the age of 40. When, as you said, I found out that my my former husband, now former husband, had been betraying me for most of our marriage um, with men, actually. And it turns out that uh, it was it was just a it was five days of the most grueling discovery uh, and um uh, you know, across the board, you know, over Thanksgiving of 2013, um, discovery and disclosure. And it was not a professional disclosure, by the way, which I highly recommend that everybody has a professional disclosure for those of the people that have dealt with, you know, betrayal trauma and they're going through that journey. Um, but it was a time also for me where I found that my resilience for my 17 year old girl was still there. Right. And so she's that 17 year old self within me that learned so much from my mom 
is the is that 17 that 17 year old girl came forth at, with me at 40 and mm-hmm. i didn't realize it at the time though guy like i didn't realize what was happening but what was happening was that that 17 year old former version of me that got myself back up at 17 was also helping me to rise at the age of 40 and so between 40 and 42 i had a lot of self exploration a lot of deep dive there was one therapist that really was a great guide in my life i call her a coach as well and i had a support group but i really held my secret a lot too because i was i didn't know what i didn't know like who, who's going to understand any of what you're walking through when you just found out that your entire marriage was not what you thought right mm-hmm. and so and then you know you go into that space of of course this would happen to me why did this happen to me how did this happen to me right like is it me you start to think that you're the problem and what i found was no that wasn't it at all <laughs> i was not the problem i'm actually a really amazing woman and it's taken me now i'm turning 50 this year and it's taken me a while to get to that point right uh it's not you though it's not you it's other people's projections of pain that cause all of this and so between 40 and 42 i did a lot of deep dive found myself in nature, climbing mountains, paddling with whales and dolphins, really doing a lot of nature therapy, a lot of nature therapy, which we'll dive into. And then I started a business out of it. And um, in resilience, what I found through all of it, there's there's five really key pieces of my resilience. And that's now the key uh, pieces that I use in my speaking engagements as well. That's a nutshell. There's that, so much more. It's a big nutshell. Stuff. <laughs> that that was very well done. Thank um, you. <laughs> I've had to do it a few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, uh, obviously. But uh, um, I mean, there's a lot there that I, I want to reach into. The book uh, is called "Walk Through This." Um, when did you When did you put the book together? Well, can I tell you a really quick thing about that book? When I was 17 years old, I was dry. This is where people need to, and anybody listening to this, please, there are moments in our life that are awakening moments. Do not close your eyes to them. Those are moments that I call, I call them God wink moments. People call them whatever they want. Um, it's being present where you hear something within yourself that says, hey, you can do this. Get up. You can, there's a reason for this, right? We so often, our ego takes over and we just sit there like we're naysayers, right? Like that doesn't, I don't know what I'm hearing. That doesn't doesn't make sense. Da, da, da. Those are awakening moments. And so when I was 17, I was I was in college. I went to college um, it, near my hometown, Madison, Wisconsin. And I remember driving down the road and I was having a really tough day, a really tough day. And I heard this voice, call it what you want, the universe, God, mm-hmm. angels that said, hey, this isn't for nothing. You have got to keep going. The other people are need this exact message that you're walking through in this journey that's so hard. They so this to- was in the wake of your 17 years old. I was about nine, I was about 19, 18, 19 at the time that this happened, but I was still dealing with it, right? Like, I mean, that doesn't go away. When mm-hmm. you've been traumatized, it doesn't go away. You learn how to use it in your life. It shapes you, but it does not define who you are. And so it was still shaping me at that time. And I literally heard in my head, you're going to write a book someday. Now, I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, from 17 all the way to 40, I'm sitting there going, I'm, I remember sitting on a bed with my girlfriends in Colorado, literally saying, what was that about that I heard this in that? I, but I don't feel like. Like, I, what am I going to write about? Like, I don't really have anything to write. I, did, I had stuff to write about, but I still wasn't talking openly about what had happened. Mm. And my girlfriend said to me, I'll never forget it, sitting on a bed in Colorado, which, by the way, was where my first biggest keynote happened to be as well. Talk about full circle. And she looked at me and she said, I was about 38 years old, 39 years old. And she said, uh, right before everything happened, and she said, start a blog because people need to hear your voice. And you may not know your full story right now, but it doesn't matter. It's unfolding. And so this is, there's something here. And then at 40, when all of this happened, I I remember sitting there going, oh, that's why I never wrote the book because my story wasn't complete. And so at about 42, when I started feeling a little bit more on my feet, um, that's when I was like, okay, this, this, this is the book and this, I need to start speaking my truth. And then we had the Me Too movement. And, you know, I, that was my first blog post that I actually put out about what had happened to me at 17. I published it and went and climbed a mountain and literally was like, publish, I'm out, went and climbed a mountain. <laughs> people had to say, literally, I was too afraid of the comments. So I climbed the mountain for a full day, came off that mountain and finally had the courage and bravery to open my computer and to 
see what everybody had said. And I was blown away at the number of people Mm. that were like, oh my God, that's me too. And I'm so sorry that I wasn't there for you. And I didn't realize that the pain was that that deep. And then, um, I mean, there's a whole story about how the book even came into play, but the book was published in 2021. Uh, November 2021. And it's, it's been, uh, sorry, November 2020, November 2020. Yeah. And it's been just a remarkable journey in and of itself. It's just incredible. From the time that the, this event happened till you, you said it was around 40 or 42 when you, you think you said got on your feet. Yeah. Um, a lot was going on for you. You said you weren't really speaking openly. Mm-mm about yeah. this and at the same time though it sounds like you were on a healing journey yeah what was working for you in that healing journey what was helping you do you know so there were three words that came to me when i was paddling on the ocean and um again it's the awakening moments right where i literally looked into the sky and was like what are the what are the pieces that are guiding me? And one was truth. One was speaking my truth. And so I would speak my truth, but I would I did it I did it in small incrementals, right? Like we can't just go out there and I mean you can just go out there and speak your whole truth at one time. It's very hard though when the truth is this big, right? And so I was speaking it in small little ways. I would drop the hints, little things in in posts on social media, or I would tell like a girl. What? Like, for um, instance, like, you know, it's really hard when people are going through hard times. I'm going through yeah. a hard time right now. Right. Just like little things. Um, I remember the day that, you know, I sat with my friends down at a pizza place and I made my at the time my husband and I were still married. And I said, you need to tell everybody because I cannot be around my friends anymore and just hold on to the secret that's not mine to hold. And so he literally like told everybody at the time, like, this is what's been going on. And we were still um, trying to figure out stuff back then in terms of like what that it, here's the thing that is really really hard in a situation like what I've lived through you don't realize the depth and the magnitude until you get far out of it and mm-hmm. so when I explained to people that yeah I was still in talking terms and and I was and I've forgiven him I had just choose to have my relationship very different today than what I even anticipated it being um I, my boundaries are hard set And that's okay. And I found that that's what's needed to be done. It's transformed a lot through the years because because there's just a lot there and that's okay. Um, You know, so but my my truth was huge, like speaking my truth incrementally and then being able to stand really deep grounded in my truth. And then the second thing was inspiration, finding inspiring moments throughout your day. For me, that was literally going outside, holding a butterfly in my hand for 10 minutes and just being awakened by that butterfly or, you know, looking up into the clouds and saying, Hey, you know what? I'm my suffering. The world is so much greater than my suffering. Right. Or uh, whatever it was. And then the, the last thing was hope. And I needed to continue to find hope because not hope externally, but hope internally with me as who I am. We lose ourselves along the way in life. We just do when we are, when we're all of a sudden, I mean, I did, I was in a very codependent relationship. I lost who I was in many ways, even though I also knew who I was, there were parts Mm -hmm. of me that I did lose. And, and I was in that space of like finding them again. And I'm still in that space and I will forever be in that space. Been through a lot. (laughs) I don't know what else to say. I've been through a lot. What's so kind of refreshing in talking about you, Sarah, is you, you you're very aware of the the many facets of yourself and of being human and it's it's not just all um a, a, a straight shot from an event to healing but you you talk a lot about or you kind of exhibit a, a pretty intense self-awareness yeah. um was that present before the sexual assault? Yes, but I didn't know it. But That's what's it. so interesting. There is an awareness. I'm so, thank you for acknowledging that. Like truly, like me, human to human, thank you for acknowledging that. Because <laughs> I think that sometimes people mistake that for ego. They mistake mm-hmm. that for, oh, you know, and, and it's, um, it's not ego. It's literally, and we all have it. There's this, there's this space of us within us where we do have an awakening and awareness that was given to us, I believe as a child, 
And along, and I was, I wasn't, I was a huge art major, like artist, right? Like growing mm-hmm. up, I loved the arts. I loved drawing and painting and paying attention to detail. And what I didn't realize was that that was going to be my key to healing everything from along the way we lose that. And I also equate it to curiosity. I'm a very curious human being. I'm just going to state it. Like I, and I love like seeing what else is out there. Right. And imagination. I love the imagination. Um, and it's, it's this space though, as a child that I think that we lose because we can't be become adults and we step too much into the ego space. So yes, I, I remember my, one of my very first moments guy, it was so interesting. I was probably 10 years old and I was, um, alone in the dark. I love the dark. I love climbing mountains by myself in the dark right now. It's almost 50. Uh, and I was in my small town and I was at the bottom of the hill that we lived at at the time. And it was snowing and I was looking up into the street lamp and I saw the snowflakes and I was just watching every snowflake. You've never done this. You got to do this raindrops. You can do it with raindrops too. And you just watch that raindrop or that snowflake falling from the sky all the way down to the ground. And okay, now imagine where that, and this was me at 10, where did that snowflake come from? How did that snowflake get created? And wow, no snowflake is is the same. Every single snowflake is different. Every human is different, which then went into, I'll never forget this. Like, wow, I wonder what people in Africa are doing. I wonder what people in California are doing. I wonder what like all these different people in the world are feeling and exhibiting and how they're actually living their life. And here I am, this was me at 10, watching a snowflake fall to the ground. (laughs) And I remember thinking, like having this internal conversation with myself, like this world is so much more vast than what we Mm -hmm. even realize. And all that comes into play in nature to create that one snowflake that then I got to watch fall to the ground. Nobody else did, just me. So yes, have I had this? I have. And you know what? It's been mistaken along the way. And it's too bad Mm -hmm. because it's in every single one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, something about, I mean, you, you are a force. There's no denying it. You meet you, you talk to you, you are a force. And I want to get to how you recognize that and how you said to yourself or how it came to you. Like, okay, I want to help others. I need, what did that look like for you when that started to take shape for you? It's, it's so funny when I hear that from people like you're such a force and I struggle with that I'm gonna state that like I do have a little bit of a struggle with that only because again I think the if I could give listeners one thing that force is within every single one of us and yes I am a force I call myself a little bit force of nature it's who I am and it's in every single one of us and embrace the heck out of it just embrace and embody the heck out of it because it's we need more of that. We need more of it. Um, and, it's, and just suffice to say, it looks different in different people. A hundred percent. Right. hundred percent. Absolutely. It does. It absolutely does. I think the greatest gift of what we live through is the fact that we get to find ourselves in these different versions of who we are along the way. I had now back to your question. I used to be a teacher. I was a te- an elementary school art teacher um, back in Wisconsin, and I loved my job. I loved watching my kids transform into these little art like artists, and then humans, and then watching them grow into adults and finding out what they're doing now. I'm in touch with a, a, most a lot of them actually, even today. And for me, watching people transform was the like it was just super cool as little kids. So today, I decided, you know, when I was going through all of this, I remember my coach at the time. She said, said to my therapist, said to me, "There's something happening within you that's not happening within others, and you got to figure that what that is and dive into it and use it and help other people." And so I remember telling her, I was like, "Well, I don't know. I go paddle with whales and dolphins and climb mountains and like love being outside." I, and then I started diving into the science behind that. And when I realized that there was, that was actually the core principle. It was one of my core principles along with my values and my beliefs and the, the, uh, you know, diving into what resilience is for me. It's not mindset, it's whole human body. I was like, Oh wait, we have something pretty cool here. Let's help other people with it because that gets me back into doing what I want to do, which I've always, I've missed doing, which is teaching. Now, when I'm working with people, it's not only about the adult. That's what's really cool is that I get Mm -hmm. to dive into them as children, quote, as well, right? Like that playfulness, that fun, that spirit within that we lose along the way, finding that awareness again and that awakening. 
So that's how it all happened. And, you know, I didn't have a plan for any of this. Who does? Who does? Give me a break. You think you do? (laughs) At some point you were like, I want to write this book. Well, I got I mean, that wasn't even my plan. That was like, that was like me. That was the awakening me listening to something that was plopped into me at 17. I wasn't a writer. I remember my mom when I wrote the book and she started reading my stuff and she goes, where the heck did you get this writing? Like, you're not a writer. I said, she, and I started laughing. I said, well, apparently I am now, you know, and she goes, you're an amazing, she was like, she was blown away. She goes, you are an amazing writer. I said, well, yes, I don't know. I think for me, it's just writing what's coming through me, just Mm -hmm. like art was, right? Like it was just, you're painting, you're drawing, it's coming through you. It's your expression of self. Let me ask you something. So there, again, there's a lot of, uh, honoring of, of your soul, of your heart, of your gut in what you, in, in you, Yeah, right? we hear that and what you say, but you've been through a lot of trauma. Mm-hmm. Did you have, how was that impact? How did the trauma impact that, uh, ability to see your heart, to honor your heart, to trust that? Well, it's that thing that I work on every single day, which is not beating myself up because you could do one thing when you go through trauma, you can look at yourself and say, wow, you're such an idiot for being in this position, which I did for a number of times. I kept sitting sitting there saying to myself, how did you get into this? Again, it goes back to how did this happen to you? Are you the issue? Are you the problem? And gaslighting, manipulation, all of that, which you learn more about it's not you. It's other people's projections of their pain onto you. I didn't ask for anything that I went through. Mm-hmm. I happened to be in it. Yes. I didn't ask for it. I fell in love with the version of him that he couldn't love himself. And so, and it's the same thing with, you know, so many, so many things along the way. Um, self-forgiveness is the biggest, most amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, incredible, on a just on, it's not used enough. The most amazing tool that you can embody and use every single day, looking yourself in the mirror every single day when you get up and saying, oh, I'm a human being. I'm not meant to be perfect. I'm meant to learn. It doesn't pardon or condone what you, you know, those, those actions at all. It's this, this choice and this decision to look at the patterns from our past and saying, well, that sucked. Not going to do that again. Cause remember you will continue to learn the same lesson over and over and over again. You will continue to have that lesson until you learn it and you choose differently next time. I got into some pretty bad relationships post my divorce. I will Mm -hmm. tell you that. And everybody, I mean, my, my, I mean, I've sat there and gone seriously again. Well, here's the other thing that we all need to remember. There's this thing called epigenetics. You know what I mean? Like dive into that. You're, you're genetically also predisposed to things because of our own genetic past you know, our family, our timeline that we are now stepping into. And you're literally given this gift to look at it and say, okay, I'm going to choose differently next time because you're going to continue to have this. It's it's also, you're also genetically predisposed to stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much there that we could dive into. And that I wrote about some of that in my book because I was like, how does this keep happening? And then, you know, and then you realize, oh, wait, it's not only me that I'm breaking these patterns for, it's my family. It's my past. It's like all of those ancestors that have also chosen similar things that we didn't even realize. And you're breaking it for your future. Going through this, you you mentioned some therapist. Had you all along been seeing a no. therapist? No. And here's the thing. I, when I went through that thing at 17, I had a situation where I was betrayed so deeply by a therapist that I can't even explain to you how awful it was, how awful it was. And I write about that in the book. I mean, it was the worst, worst thing that anybody could do to a 17 year old young girl. And, um, 
So then when I went through this at 40, what's interesting about this is, um, so my, I found my, my former husband help, right? Like immediately, immediately. Cause what do we do? We find them help. And then all of a sudden we're sitting here with the compilation of the wreckage and I'm like, well, now what do I do? Right. And I asked for help over and over. Um, he went to rehab and I, searched and searched and searched for help and called that rehab facility. And they actually re-traumatized me because they would not get me. I begged for help and I could not get the help. And so I went back and had a conversation, a very nice conversation over a breakfast with somebody from that, from that uh, facility and told them like, look, the partner is, I was devastated and you all didn't help me. You turned your back on me and that's not cool. Now they did find one person who is, has become my dear colleague and friend. And um, she's the only person I'd ever seen ever that I trusted. And she also was a coach, not only a therapist. And, uh, and I will never forget it when I called her that day. And I said, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I'm I'm literally losing my mind. I, I I don't, I I need help and nobody's helping me. And she told me, she, I remember her telling me like, you're also experiencing it's re-trauma from your 17 year old self and let's get together and we'll meet. And she was that person that helped me along the way. I've done a lot of self work with other things along the way though. Yes. A ton of work, um, you know, from energy healers, I'm Reiki certified myself to, you know, coaches, a lot, so many different things. So um, your your website is sarahschultingkranz.com. And that's uh, Sarah Schulting, S-C-H-U-L-T-I-N-G-K-R-A-N-Z. How do you work with people? Mm, very lovingly. <laughs> Is that a great word? And, okay. Let <laughs> is that me a great you, explanation? <laughs> yes. Let me ask you a different question. I know what you're asking. Who are your people? <laughs> Who are my people? Yeah. I knew you were asking me that. <laughs> but that's just, you know, me coming out. Um, so I work one-on-one with people. Yes, I do do one-on-one coaching. I work literally across the board. I've worked with CEOs to, uh, you know, HR people. I've worked in businesses. I work uh, individuals that have been living through trauma across the board. There is not just one person any longer. Longer. That's what I'm finding because we've all lived through something. Um, I do one-on-one coaching, but I also run retreats. So I run retreats in the Grand Canyon, Alaska, and in the San Juan Mountains. It's amazing the work that I do because it's really deep diving into who we are along with group coaching pre and post. The Grand Canyon is my signature retreat. It's the one that I've been doing a lot um, for the last like seven years. The Alaska retreat started a couple of years ago and that's fun. We do kayaking next to glaciers and different things. <laughs> and then the San Juan Mountains, um, I deep do a lot of deep dive work with Florence Williams. She wrote Heartbreak uh, and The Nature Fixed, bestselling author. She's amazing. She's lived through some, a lot of betrayal as well. And so we do three nights up in this incredible retreat center in the San Juan Mountains in Colorado and just do a lot of deep dive. Um, I love working in the retreat aspect because it gets people out of their head and really into their bodies, which is somatic healing. Uh, and it's, it's a beautiful space of bringing nature into it from, um, you know, mindfulness, coaching, everything along the way. So I do a lot of different types of work. Um, and I also keynote speak. And so I'm starting programs now, which is really cool where the, you do the keynote speaking and then you also include lunch and learns. And then I go back and do the hike with the organization, the leaders, and we do a lot of deep dive that way. It's, I like to call it the new art of resilience. So it's using, um, you know, everything in their personal life to really create their best professional life as well. Cause it's so integrated. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and we need that right now, more than now, more than ever, now, more than ever. So the, the people who come to you, are they people who've been traumatized and or the, or what? No, I mean, yes. And no, like there are people right. that come to me simply because, well, here's the deal. We've all lived through something. So let's just like knock that one out of the park, right? Doesn't matter. It, it, from small T trauma to big T trauma, you know this, like, right? I mean, this is like, this. Is, it's so funny though to me, uh, it's so interesting. It's not funny. It's interesting to me how people don't realize what they've lived through until all of a sudden they're sitting with somebody that's lived through something and they're like, oh, wait, I experienced something similar to that. Or it wasn't as big, but, and yes, it was, you know, on the same spectrum of some sort. So 
I really work with people across. I've had 16 year old boys trying to figure out what high school they're or college they're going to go to that have attended my retreats all the way up to women in their seventies that, you know, are re- have really been dealing with a lot of stuff in their life. Mm-hmm. And it, so it's really across the board. Um, which is what's really interesting about the work that I do, because it's not, I know everybody says you got to work with that one person. I choose to work with that one human, right? It's not about the, it's about you showing up as a human being and me working with you in that human space. Right. So someone who wants to just be more fulfilled or find themselves more or be their, their authentic self would come to you. Yes. Or if they've literally there's they're like in that space of trauma where they're like, hey, I need some guidance coming out of that. Yes, that's who works with me, too. It's across the board. It's, um, you know, I think it's people that are being called to really find this different version of themselves and just want to heal. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's and grow and, and do that personal work. Those are the people that are drawn to me. And why? what is it about you that you feel allows you to do that work? Cause I'm authentic. Cause I walk in what I preach right there. It's it's, there is a very big difference. There are people every single day who preach, but don't walk. And I it's, you walk what you preach, you walk in what you walk. And you, that's to me, like I still do the work, right? It's not me saying, oh, this is what you have to go do. Now I'm going to go home and do something different. Mm -hmm. I still do it every single day. I'm learning every single day. So I think that that's the piece and that authenticity, that vulnerability of being self and understanding that we're nothing but mirrors for one another. That's what's the most beautiful piece. That's what my clients have told me across the board. They're like, you're you. It's just like, you're just you, (laughs) all of you. (laughs) I show up as all of me. And I think that that's that force piece that sometimes people, um, you know, they sometimes mistake and it's okay. I don't, it's, it's, it's okay. I've been mistaken a few times. It's okay. Why? <laughs> I, am I am. As I know we're kind of winding down here, but um, do you feel it's difficult or challenging for a lot of us to accept ourselves, to be authentic? Yes. 100%. Why? Why? You know, I think, unfortunately, we let the world shape us instead of our values and who we are as humans, what we were intended to be all along become us, right? Like that's, I think I I really, and I've seen it. I've seen people, they're afraid to be who they are because they're afraid of other people's judgments and other people's projections. And what if somebody says something and, you know, I, I think, you know, for me, I've, and I, and I truly do believe this was my 17 year old girl where I had to sit there going, I mean, I shut up for so long and it's, it was awful. It was absolutely, it's horrible to hold secrets. It is so difficult to walk every single day in a secret. And so the best thing that we can do is release that and truly find who we are, every version of ourselves. My trail name is Layers. I got it when I was on the trail for 22 days, walking the John Muir Trail, and I'll never forget it. One of the guys is like, man, he goes, get walking with you. And I'd never, I just met him on the trail and he said, walking with you, you wear, I wear a lot of layers on the outside just because I get cold on top, not the bottom, but on hot on top. And he said, and there's just so many layers of you. And he goes, that's your trail name layers. And I said, you know what? It is. That's my trail name. We all have a trail name when we're on the trail, especially like through hiking or distance hiking. And I said, that's, that's the people out on the trail. They know me as layers because, and, and I think that the most beautiful thing is to not be afraid to pull it back to cry those tears, to share, to be emotional, to dive into those pieces of us, because there's that powerful leader guide North star in each and every one of us. And how can that shine bright if we don't allow Mm -hmm. ourselves to really, you know, uh, shine it up and to let it be seen. Sarah, man, you are amazing. Jesus. Uh, What's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Um, well, if you see me on the trail, stop and say hi. 
I, wear, I, I carry a pair of red heels everywhere I go. So if you see the red heels, literally, that's me. I wear them on every peak that I go on just because I'm like, that's also the version of me. Um, and people have actually found me that way. <laughs> I'm not funny. joking. I've had people that literally have listened to podcasts and they're like, you're the red heel girl. I oh heard your God. podcast on. That's yep, so that's funny. me. It's so funny. I love it. It's so funny. Um, but you can find me in my website, sarahsholtoncrans.com or on LinkedIn. I'm that Sarah Shelton Kranz. Uh, Instagram, Sarah Shelton Kranz. My podcast is Live Boldly with Sarah. So that's pretty cool. I got to get you on, my friend, actually. So that's we're going to talk about that, too. And then uh, email me, Sarah at Sarah Shelton Kranz.com. It's very simple to find me. I'm on Facebook, not as much, only because I had kind of some issues over there. So yeah, can't help it. No much to say. Okay. <laughs> we'll have all this linked up at the show notes page here at the Trauma Therapist Podcast.com. Sarah, man, love to have you back. Just Thank you. Um, I would love to come back. Yeah. Just so inspiring. Um, we'll be in touch. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.